Hello Starfield fans, you are about to witness my first ever composing session I do on camera and I'm quite nervous you can tell, but I'm gonna write some space music like in Starfield because I've listened to the track New Atlantis from the original Starfield soundtrack written by Einen Sur and it inspired me to do something like that and film it. Okay, calm down. Before we start, one word of warning. I'm not going to recreate that New Atlantis track because that would be totally lame and boring and pointless and whatnot. So are you ready? Let's go. As you can see, I'm prepared and that's what I really recommend. If you want to write music, you don't want to get distracted. And what I always find the most annoying part is when you're looking for sounds, when you're really in a creative process and you're looking for sounds and you can't find the right one. So I've created this little uh, template, very simple template here in Cubase, just to have a small collection of most important sounds at hand. And about the DAW I'm using here, it's Cubase obviously, but that's not important. This video is about the creative process and that has nothing to do with equipment. Okay, one more thing, in case you are using Cubase, uh, you will be pleased to hear that I'm only using Cubase stock plugins and presets here, which makes it even more challenging for me. But you can find the list with all the plugins and presets in the show notes. Have a look. So, where are you? Ah, there. Uh, sit back, relax and enjoy my little writing session here. When I've put this template together yesterday afternoon, uh, I already had some cool ideas. So let me try to remember the ideas and then I track it very quickly. And after that, we will talk about what's going on. Just remember, we are making space music. Starfield flying into space in our mothership. Something like that. quite nice but uh, let's start with that part a little later and do other things because of course um, when you listen to the new Atlantis track there's a lot of going on in the background like a drone a drone is an ongoing carpet of sound often stays in one note in one uh, root note or something uh, I play in E minor here uh, just for you to know with a little side trip into E Dorian But now let's talk about the drone. I want to have a sound that's really wild, has much of movement and crazy noises in it. And we will play it, of course, very, very, very quietly in the background. Just let me show you what I have in mind. Something like that, okay. Uh, just let me track one minute, only the root note and some octaves. And of course, totally free without a metronome. Sounds very spacey, but not spacey enough. So I show you how we can space it up, this MIDI part. What we often do with MIDI parts, we render it in place. I just mark my part and have my shortcuts here. And now I render this part, including all the effects and stuff. Yeah, now we have um, that drone part as an audio part. So we have a little bit better options to tweak it around and for example I can very easily add a fade in here in the beginning. If you look at the melody I've played before, the first part of the melody, the first half, works perfectly over the E drone, but the second half of the melody has some harmonic changes, but normally that should also work with the drone in E in this case because all the chords also 
have an E in them. But we keep it in mind, if it sounds bad, washed out, um, confusing, uh, we're going to check the drone. Um, I'm not really mixing here, okay? Let's, let's make that clear before we continue. I'm not producing right now. I'm not mixing. I just make very little tweaks so that I feel better, so that I can listen to it and can continue with my writing mindset. I'm in my writing mindset and I don't care about mixing and producing stuff, effects and whatnot. That's the point of uh, creating a template where you just can start doing something It's just writing and later with another mindset, when I'm in my producer's mindset or mixer's mindset, I will do all the fine tuning and, and go deep into the details. But now in, the, in this moment, it's only important that I nail down some ideas and nothing is in my way. So what about some... Pre-melody... That gives us an idea of the things that are coming later in the main melody. Have you seen how I looked into the stars? It's a bright day outside. So let's make some decisions here. What do we want with this track? When you listen to New Atlantis, you will notice uh, that there is no long intro. Uh, the main melody, the orchestral melody, comes in after, I guess, 10 or 15 seconds. And that's cool because I'm personally not into long intros anyway. But no judging, you can do whatever you want. I think the pre-melody is pretty nice. And this part here can be start earlier, like, like here. And I don't think we need this deep drone. It was just to get me in the mood when I've tracked this. So let's delete delete this that note. So you can see I also shorten this part a little bit just from so that it's easier for me to handle. And I always go to full bars, not not like here shortly before the note starts or something like that. This way it's way easier to navigate. But that note that we've deleted, the deep E. Let's make it differently, like this. Let me try. Very cool. A deep analog pad. Nothing is better than a good analog pad. And now one more thing I've forgotten about our deep drone part, the part we rendered out. Render in place is the function. There's one thing everybody loves to do, everybody who works with drones like this. We can change the selector tool uh, to sizing applies time stretch. And now we time stretch that part. We can stretch it out without changing the pitch. And that makes this audio part really, really interesting. Let's go for like three minutes or so. This could be nice. Uh, that's what I'll do now. Jamming with other sounds. See what fits. This, this process can take very long and often I record something that I don't like afterwards and I delete it again. <laughs> yeah, but that's the fun. That's part of the fun. I think that was a good idea to bring something in. Uh, maybe that pre-melody sound Yeah, during the second half of the melody. So let me see if I can do it. No, I don't need the click. I don't need the click or something. <laughs> That was fun. I don't need the click, no. And totally wrong.
it was a bit off in the second, but hey, let's not get too bitchy here. Uh, it's just music, okay? And you never know what happens when you travel through space. Now it's time to think about the storytelling of our track, okay? Because it's a soundtrack. It tells a story. I mean, every song should tell a story, but it's in special instrumental music can tell a story without words. Maybe it's a good idea to have a little story in mind. So far, we've just started with our spaceship. We left the planet. We are into space, seeing all the beautiful stars. It's wonderful, a little bit epic. What happens now? What happens now? All right. So maybe now, after the first uh, melody, it's time to open the track again. Let's uh, minimize everything, create more space so that we can introduce something new. Transitions. I think transitions is the right word. We lead, need a lot of very free transitions where something is uh, dis disappearing and another thing is coming up. So not, not like a drum fill or a drop or something, no. Soft and smooth transitions. Okay, this works. Um, what is this sound here? I know it's very quiet. I know what you're, th what you're saying right now. Oh, it's too quiet. I can't hear anything. Yes, but that's the point. That's the point. We are writing into the silence. We are writing quiet parts right now. It doesn't make sense when I turn it up like crazy. I mean, you can do it just so that you can understand what I'm doing here. Oh, this is good. But you know, it's not always uh, loud parts and louder and making stuff more and bigger. No, we need quiet parts, so we write a quiet part. I go back to minus 12 or something. The idea is that in the original New Atlantis uh, track, I hear lots of weird arpeggios and, and sequences going on. Don't know what it really is. But let me try something like that. This was cool, I think. It's E minor. With an B in the bass. What's the tempo? I don't know. I need the tempo. Well, let's start here. such things I can do forever <laughs> because it's fun. I, I enjoy playing. That's easy as that. Do you get the idea? We come out here. The thing is, I love to work with tempo changes. Woo! Tempo changes, yes. Uh, especially in such tracks, in such open and free tracks. Obviously, I wanted to start very slowly with the melody and stuff. That, that is really a legato melody. Oh, epic and slow. But, you know, maybe it's time to speed up a little and write a more dramatic part, well, an exciting, a little bit scary part, because now we are we are coming close to a, a strange planet, and maybe our radar on board stopped working. It makes weird noises, so that we ask, oh, is there a danger? Are we safe? And now for the tempo, I always have a tempo track in my templates. So I have a tempo change here uh, to 110. I don't know if it works. I have something in mind. Uh, that's what I can show you on video because you can't look in my mind, all right? When I play this part, I already uh, get the next idea in the best case. And uh, that's what's happening here. Let me see if this works. Let it open here so that I can make correction. Maybe it's good. Let me try something. So, 
after some more noodling around, I think I have something for the analog pad and also the SF pad. This last chord here is um, a bit too loud. I want to have more dynamic in my track like this. You know, also there will be a lot of automation going on later. And I will do tutorials in Cubase about automation, volume and stuff, everything. You can automate everything. I will make tutorials about that here on this channel. Isn't that cool? Perfect for you to subscribe. You're still watching this video, so subscribe to the channel. What else? All right, I could stay here in this uh, moment and, and I could start producing already and make it bigger and better and add automation, like I've said. But... I'm writing. Just a quick reminder of that this is a writing session and let's just continue. I want to stay on this chord, on this E sus 2. Let's call it E sus 2. It's, all, it's also correct and it's a very important chord for this track. I should really... Yeah, because it's open, because it's open. It doesn't go back to the clean E minor or something. Ne? It doesn't resolve. It stays open with that F sharp in it. And this F sharp needs more support. I did that here in this SF part. It's... Oh, that was nice. This is what I'm talking about, the, the F sharp here. All right, so this chord sounds very dramatic and it should stay for a little longer because I have another idea. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So I want to add a dramatic and um, dangerous sounding bass line with the same cinematic strings, but not on, not on the same track. Uh, for reasons, <laughs> just uh, let's duplicate this track and select all events and delete them. And here uh, it should... Da, 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 da. Oh, this is a bit loud here. Uh, the, the very cool in Cubase. You have a chord here and one note of that chord is pretty loud. And sometimes it's um, tricky to catch it here in this area so you can mark that note and go to velocity and change it with this like this i do that all the time like this because it's way more elegant oh. you know the good thing is that it's always easy to make quick changes i've noticed that this is still too long here and need it need to play it differently <laughs> We have that break there. You can bring it back and glue the part together and also glue these notes together. So what I did here was um, that I've recorded the part that I had in mind on another track. I don't need that track anymore, to be honest. And I glued the old part and the new part together. So let's make it a little bit bigger by doing the same with the brass 2 sound. This time we can just copy and paste because those parts are really the same and it saves a lot of time right now to just copy and paste it. Oh. 
long notes, endless time. Really, really, really cool. But the bass line is not dangerous enough. So I have this brass sound. Let's let me see if it works. So what's the point with this dangerous uh, sounding part? Of course, we need a little bit tension in our track, but and it's more uh, more dramatic than the original New Atlantis. But remember, we discovered a new planet and had trouble with our radar. And now, behind that strange planet, suddenly a big spaceship appears. And we are not sure, is it the enemy? But then we realize, oh no, it's just another peaceful space travel like we are. So everything is nice and peaceful. We can continue with our space travel in peace. And um, maybe it's time to bring our melody back. And thinking about transitions, I have this flute sound here. And I've uh, told you about that important F sharp note. How does it sound? <laughs> Oh yes, that's exactly what I want. This is an empty bar and we continue here again with our cinematic strings. Ah, oh, let me, let me quickly hmm, think of what I'm doing here. Okay, so let me change the markers so that I can quickly jump to the right spot. And do you remember that we've changed the tempo earlier? Um, it's now faster than in the beginning. I think that is really cool when I play the same melody, but it's now a little happier. <laughs> but I need a test run. Whoa, this, that is way too fast, uh, 110. Let's make it a little bit slower. The original tempo in the beginning was 89, so let's go for 95 or something. And what else? Um, I also play an octave higher and must remember to stay on the F sharp in the end, not resolving it into the E. I'm sorry, but this is a perfect example of things you should not do when you're writing music. I just thought my phone was ringing when I was playing. Hmm. So let's play again and uh, don't worry about the phone. It, it's just a notification that uh, of something. I don't know. At this point, I don't really know. Maybe it's even a little bit too much what I do here for such a space music track. But I don't care, to be honest. I'm just having a good time. I'm not second guessing. And um, sometimes, you know, you start a project with an intention and uh, it ends up somewhere else. And there's nothing wrong with it, you know. I don't want to save the world and also this is not a commercial work here where I have an, an order, do this and do that. I'm free as a bird right now and do whatever I want. But don't forget to give me some feedbacks in, a, in the comments and don't for, forget to leave a like. Let me know if, if we should um, do more s projects like this. Of course, I will do it anyway. But let's continue, we are not done yet. Okay, let's go back a little bit in time and see what we've done so far. Oh, we had this little part here. What was it? Let's check it. Here the drone needs to be louder and also I have an idea. It's also in the New Atlantic track and we all love such things. It's a boom, 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 boom. The numb bass sound here. Okay, let me 
just improvise here. I'll play eight notes or something. That's the question. Is it with a little bit of uh, syncopation or straight eighth notes or sixteenth notes? What about that? Whoops, <laughs> and there was a tempo change. Okay, uh, but it's good. I do it 16th notes. Oh, please, on time, you're a drummer. It's embarrassing. <laughs> All the buttons here, you know, and being on camera is very, it's really different. You should try that out. Also, record yourself or when you're producing something or writing something. It's such an intimate process, you know, and being on camera. But it's cool. I'm cool. I'm fine. Don't worry. And uh, yet now I can quantize it to 16th notes. Let's look in the part so that you see what's going on. A little bit um, bigger here. Whoops. And also the length. No, the length is uh, is okay. Here's an outstanding note. So far, I didn't do much with any effects, I'm just using effects in the instruments. And um, on the Echo Vibes channel here, I have a um, step filter and also here is a reverb in the send channel. But again, everything is listed in the show notes if you are interested. So, and then the melody comes again. This time we need to bring back the SF pad. Remember, we did um, the second half of the melody also with the SF pad. You got me thinking. Because suddenly I hear the, the dramatic bass line ba, 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 again. Listen to this part. And I'm reducing the tempo during the last chord. Let's bring it down to like 85 maybe. Uh, because I have an idea for a possible outro. <laughs> That's interesting because I will not go back to... our usual E sus 2. Now this time I will go back to B minor.
Okay. Oh, please ignore the click. <laughs> But I think uh, we can bring the song to a peaceful end with a part like this. Uh, it still needs a little bit more tweaking. Um, I will do it right now and track it. So the idea is here that um, you feel that this, the track is coming to an end. But then suddenly, out of nothing, something new appears. But still you think, oh, you understand It's not building up anymore. It's getting quieter. It's it's a peaceful travel to the space. And let's want to try here with this part. But it's complicated to do. I can work with that. Uh, now, now let's listen uh, without click and together. Okay. Wow, I keep it this way. I'm, I'm lucky that I could play that part and track it. Oh, and sometimes it's better to save your project. <laughs> okay, so look, I think we can decide to finish the writing process. Okay, we have a lot of going on here. It's dramatic highlights and, and it sounds and melodies and also peaceful parts. Of course, we need a little more production force. Okay, but hey, we can press all of that in this one video. So let me know why it's slowly getting dark. What do you think? In the comments, don't forget it. Also, don't forget to leave a like. It's really, it really helps the channel. And um, after all, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. And um, I hope to see you soon in the next one. Okay, bye-bye.